I hope everyone got a chance to flash back to episode 163, where I gave a brief overview of digital chairside photography. Today, I'd like to focus a little more on posterior photography and really go into the reasons why we use mirrors and retractors and reflection to get the best shots we need to communicate our shades and teeth to the lab. Today, my lovely assistant and I are going to focus on a single tooth number 30 and get some really good photos, some distorted without reflection and retraction and some with, so you can really tell the difference. I try to do as much digital photography as I can without using a cell phone or an inexpensive tight camera. I, I like to use a camera that has uh, a nice aperture, nice round ring flash on the end, and I really want to focus on doing some really fine macro lens photography. And for retraction, I like to use either a plastic retractor such as this, or even my favorite would be uh, Ivoclar's Optrigate which can get the entirety of the gums out of the way and let you have a nice dry open feel to be able to take your photography. I want to always make sure I use a nice mirror set and keep my mirrors protected at all times. So I have these little soft mirror bags that I keep them in and I always wear gloves. You can use these to clean your mirrors off. And I also like to use a mirror holder. That way any shots that I take, I don't actually have to put my fingerprints on them. Hold the mirror, just like that. You can hold the mirror, or your patient can actually hold the mirror as well. To keep your mirror clean, I just use simply an alcohol swab. And to clean and dry, a tissue works just fine. To start off, I'm going to take some photographs of tooth number 30 without reflection or retraction to show you the difference Take for example this attempt to capture an occlusal photo of tooth number 30 with no retraction or mirror reflection. Besides the need to go through additional motions to set the patient's head and neck in a position, the resulting image simply isn't a great way to communicate anything to the lab. Shade, shape, design features, or even remake ideas cannot be easily communicated with this method. I'll go ahead and start off with a plastic retractor just to get the lips out of the way. I'll take this first series of photos with this plastic retractor in place and show some examples of the Optrigate device afterwards. If the patient is the only person in the room who can assist you in taking your photos, I like to ask them to hold their arm up at a 90 degree angle as shown here and then grasp the mirror handle with a strong fist. This allows you to photograph without any obstruction and enables the patient to hold the mirror firmly to retract the tongue or tissue. A light stream of air from an air water syringe prevents fogging and unclear images. As you can see, the resulting untouched occlusal mirror reflected image with retraction in place gives me a full view of the tooth in question as well as the surrounding dentition. While setting up for a lingual photo of tooth number 30, I make sure to turn my mirror around so that the small end of the mirror can reach into the mouth and not cause any discomfort while the patient is opened. Give your patient or assistant who is holding the mirror handle very specific step-by-step -step instructions on the angulation, arm position, and retraction that you need for each photo. Once again, a nice airstream is effective in defogging the mirror as well as removing any saliva bubbles from the subject area. Moving around to number 30's buckle view, give the mirror a quick wipe with a tissue to clean off any dried saliva smear and place the mirror into the vestibule before asking the patient to bite down. It is most evident at this angle the need for a constant airstream to dehumidify the reflective surface and wash away saliva interferences. The ring flash on this camera is crucial to bring the correct amount of light into the posterior and illuminate the tooth as true as possible. I want to point out two things in particular with my next series of example photos. First of all, I prefer Ivoclar's Optrigate retractor to any other method that I've tried. To aid in the insertion of the device, place a small amount of Vaseline around the exterior of the retractor where it will come into contact with the lips. Any leftover Vaseline can also be applied directly to the lips. Place the retractor in the mouth side to side and then fold the lower and upper lips into position for a comfortable fit. Secondly, I'm going to take this series of photos of number 30 with the patient's overhead light directly shining into the mouth. I'm doing this to show the difference that an appropriately focused ring flash connected to the camera can make versus using artificial room illumination. Even though we have achieved superior retraction with the Optrigate, notice that the exterior light causes shadowing and a blurry, dark effect on the reflected images. 
trust your ring flash and the settings on your camera, and use this in addition to any natural ambient light in the room to capture professional photos that can be used. Intraoral photography can be used for a wide variety of purposes, from communicating shades and design features with the lab, to constructing marketing portfolios and advertisements to promote your practice. Editing and perfecting your photos can easily be done on most office computers without the need for additional expensive software. Keep in mind that a reflected photo is exactly that, a mirror image of the original capture. My office computer happens to be a Mac, but simple photo editing can be performed on a PC with the paint program or other editing options. I attempt to flip the image either horizontal or vertical in order to show what would appear to be a straight-on image of the tooth and how it appears in the mouth. My next step is to remove any evidence of the edge of the mirror, the lip and cheek retractor, and any distracting anatomical features that are present. Always take into consideration the edge of the cropped area and try to crop at a contact point or even just mesial or distal to an adjacent tooth so that the cropped area flows the eyes back towards the subject of the photo instead of away from the center. Well, I hope this sheds some light on how detail-oriented we need to be when taking professional posterior photography and communicating to the laboratory. Proper isolation, reflection, and retraction is necessary to achieve the ideal result every time.